here we go. Okay, I had a bit of time getting it up. But anyway, here we go. Today, Milo Murphy, Epico, winding down. If you have a left. Anyway, go for our first of the pairing. We have the Mid Afternoon Snack Club, written by Jim Bernstein. Uh, Milo, Lucka, Gak, Bradley, Mort, not Chad, <laughs> um, and Amanda end up in detention where they basically do a wrestling club. Um,. Okay, anyway, uh, the cup go pretty good, um, but well, I do feel like the hammering, the breakfast club being too much, I mean, they, they, they don't, they'll do a lot, couldn't point any cast off it, but for, like, half of the think like they mentioned, they can sort of, like, in certain 80 movie, like, we get it, I, they're trying, trying to be tough aware, and a couple of them land, but, you know, you get, I do like the joke where they make fun of how stereotypical a teacher is. Um, and the teacher was by Clanky Brown doing, basically playing the Joel Carson character from the Need for Get Busted again. But it's always fun. I love fun like, when they have King I'm Madonna because of like, the reference to man. I mean, it's kind of funny, but at the same time, I don't know. I guess I am burnt out now that they do it so often when they do go, at least for no doof in the cup of code. Or very little thing for a catch. Because I won that book of more on my little stuff. No cash score or anything like that either. So I book a little bit what I thought that was interesting. Um, but I find and I'll go it go in the off the deep end to randomness. But you can a character from now I am a Murphy, I believe. Uh, the fucking Skyborg Bear thing. And they give him the whole backstory, which is kinda of awesome, but at the same time and I'll go I don't the whole the show is definitely gone. Promo we'll trying too hard to be random. You know, but he I finished to that a lot. The club balloon, and then there's like, can of club on about a bad beard, and stuff like that. That the gear brought in general. So, but the show are a few jokes in my baby go. I don't know. Kind of asked me about one line, and then went up to go with any of go. Well, I'm just kidding. I talk, I can not get words. I'm here King of it for it. And I probably feel about a lot of the not good stuff in this show, but. Not, I feel like I'm just gonna claim about everything, but for that book, I think it works. Um, and the guy went on before that, but I do think it's probably a little too random. But I like the way they connect it back into the main story, the way that you came to wrap up the fountain kind of clever. Yeah, um, nothing too do going too deep here in terms of like the character development, but you can have done more to fit the breakfast club pairing stuff rather than anything else. Although, what we do at night, but I feel like if they try to be a little more of it. Um, um, Virgo, I guess what the Burn Club thing, I remember that one doing it. <laughs> Cup Club pretty good too, I just like that one more. And they're both better than the Victoria Cup of Club, in which they just sort of renamed the Burn Club. <laughs> um, I compared to that anyway. Well, I didn't have to, but I was only watching, uh, the kind of show for some reason. <laughs> now I have to, I have to actually see the Burn Club. Uh, rubber hand, my brother seen it, so. <laughs> So there's that, but you know, I know the, the story and the tropes is okay with it. And it comes with a connect homage, it's just too long to know about what we're doing, and it gets a little too random, but I thought it was a pretty fun episode, I thought the character was on point, I liked the musical number, especially the one with the bear, and it was a fun episode. Uh, I feel like we could have tried to make it a little more legitimate character episode, that was a little far. You got kind of weren't willing to. And it's a little ominous about what appearing. Maybe too random. But the way it done was an entertaining episode and it was good. Kind of homage. Even if. I feel like I'm trying to find negative. I don't know. I don't know people are like that show when I am. These days. But, uh. Even if that, they're gonna be. They're gonna be a minor problem. The random stuff don't bother me too much here. It's kind of built into the show at this point, so it's not like a couple of unique go. But, but either way, it will go fun up because it all looked a really good one, but it's still pretty good. I, I enjoyed the one. I think we're still starting. I don't know if you had a few more intricate events of letting Milo take over instead of other stuff, but for the most part. But 
If you like watching if the other episode continue with that trend, so I'll see you in a minute for that one. For Park and Rec, W R I E P K. That's me saying it wrong. Okay, and I know. Trust me. I'm just speaking. Park and Rec, written by Valerie and Marja. Name last name I forgot, but anyway, it's them. In this episode, the gang had to clean a park because it got ruined, I think. I don't remember. There was one park set up. I'll bring it up in a minute. In a bit. Um, they had to clean it up. And, um, Amanda and Melissa are taking charge of it, but they get overly competitive. While, meanwhile, Jack could get hung up on a statue and I let's cave him. While, Cavendish, no, I mean Dakota and Doof clean up some alien garbage. Um, okay, the, the, the camera couple, Dakota, keep saying it wrong, I'm used to them being together, even with the whole, I'm not crazy, I like the whole arc of them playing up, like, in concept, but they've wrung it out a little too long, and on top of that, that means more time for Doomers run, even though he's not in, like, a ton of these, and fifth one, I didn't care for a couple of it's another one where they go to it well from sort of being useless. And it's not that funny. I like the ending gag, I guess. The, the gag with Bob Locke when he appeared, I liked that. Otherwise, and it dug it, it still got time. It doesn't really add anything at all. You know? But, um. That's an that work out pretty well. Very good night, well bound. We get to see a character dynamic we haven't seen before. Amanda and Malika turned out, yeah, Malika got quite over to nature to earn that kind of clash, and that stuff is the best stuff in the cup of code. It's nice to give them clash, and it could be, it go in direction, it go in the direction that you would expect, but it could dynamic we haven't seen before, and it is unique for the cup of code. And I don't think it can still get an okay amount of clean time, even if it is Amanda and Malika who are dark here. You know, on top plot is nothing too special, but I thought it was funny enough. Um, go. Which, you know, get woke up pretty entertaining episode. Um, the doof stuff drank it down, but not by a lot. I would give the other one hit, episode hit higher high, but this one was not so good. You know? Um, <laughs> the running gag in this one is that it began with. This thing was shown sometime done where it like began with a truck crashing I think to eating here truck driver and the truck driver it got breaking the fourth wall super hard telling agent hey we're gonna never episode where I have to do this just to get the plot started and he didn't break it over fall go hard to do it. It even reappeared and go catch like a tagging a cat can appear in that cup of code. I thought that was pretty damn funny. Uh, it get a little too mad, but I think the cup of hard. That I thought it worked honestly. Although it is kind of interesting how they. they I'm recording something like Okay, I got interrupted. Well, I, oh yeah, um, well, the thing about that is the way it began by hammering in and making fun of the fact that they're going back to feel well of the driver crashing in the truck to get the pump started. And, uh, they're lampshading it. But, I know I'm complaining about this, but they also go to the old well. Of dudes for being useful and flash mecha thing up, which they do in the cup of code with no irony whatsoever. And I think that's way more annoying well than that one. Although that can be kind of stretching, but it's still kind of ironic. There's a handful of lines which are meant to be wink, wink, no judge, but more to an other show do anything. And not really great they even come to it. There's that one on the A Griller where again, we do whatever you want, if any care about the story. And then there's the you know, when the writer has an idea, when they have a lot of this, do they know that we're doing these things, or just kind of a, we're a typical when we you know, you know, gun time key in these shows, but it's kind of a weird streak, um, but it was the funniest part of the cup of gun, for that reason, but it's going pretty funny. Overall, the cup of gun good, it, you know, the, the key plot, weak, bad thing else, is pretty solid, it could generic we have seen before, so both of them were pretty good, and mostly put a Milo in a crew at the center. And this one also showed that you could score it. In the main plot, the game involved too much Mercury Glock stuff, you know. 
back though, even though could have been done. You know, better? Is it proof that you can do something somewhat unique just by using the people in my uh, crew? Which again, that's what Finny can be able to do. We're going to go back more about Buford and what he's doing and whatnot. For the same one example. But I think that's way of a show. And it can enhance the thing up. It feels like every week they're going to get me to complain about the show again, even when it gets up right. And I'm way more or less cynical than most people seem to be. Is it that I'm pointing out the things they do right when they do them? Because I think it's kind of an interesting contract. But, um, probably at least only a few more weeks of that. But, um, the, uh, but anyway, I totally, I don't totally enjoy the Cup of Cups combo. I, I just kind of wish I enjoyed them a little more. But anyway, a fun pairing that puts more focus on Milo, right? Okay. So it works. Next week, we have Escape slash Milo in space. Cool. I hope Dooms for going to a home planet and don't come back. <laughs> We're going with the Poochie metaphor. <laughs> Dooms for dying when you to a home planet. <laughs> Uh, but, yeah, that's what I got, and those should be fun. They got things kind of escaping, so, drink, go, I shall see you. Then, Nako made a force be with you. They're not Star Wars replicating in the Gap Code. Although, the part from Wreck Pun might be of that pattern a whole bit. <laughs> that part is like, you probably seen it. And you can take MLP, returning a cool pant, so, very good connection. <laughs> No, I'm okay, I'll show you. <laughs>